Okay, so Sharad covered a little bit about account aggregator. I'll cover what we are doing with this. And the beauty of this is it's now deployed. So we can actually show you the results and the benefits uh, of what we are doing. And these are green shoots. We just got them three, four days back. So uh, the timing was really good. So, so let's uh, you know, talk about before we dry, uh, go into this. So everyone here uses UPI and it's super simple. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to ask how many of you have applied for a loan, but you know the pain that goes uh, into providing documents, bank statements, send the statement to the bank, stamp karo, fill, uh, you know, fill up forms, give me this document, that document, self-attest it. Uh, what, what happens there is it creates lots of costs, right? So what has happened is we've, we've all talked about in the 15, 20 years that have passed about MSMEs never getting credit. Uh, large corporations get credit. Uh, retail salaried people, so retail credit is, I mean, like more than penetrated everywhere. You can walk into a Vijay sales or Chroma and before you walk out with a TV, you've got a loan. Uh, uh, some of that has taken root digitally as well. But everyone's ignored MSMEs. And the reason uh, primarily has been is the cost of doing this, right? So uh, typically to acquire an MSME customer, if you, you're sending someone to collect documents, then you're verifying them. Then uh, even if you verified them, sometimes they're fraudulent because you know uh, hard copies can be manufactured as can soft copies. And then there's collections. So what happens? The minimum ticket size usually is like bottoms out at three lakhs to five lakhs. And that leaves that small trader population completely uh, uh, you know, ignored. Nobody wants to lend to them. They're not economically viable. And you know, we all know the banks make a lot of money lending to, to the cream. So this gets completely ignored. So that was one of the major problems. Um, the other problem is, see, a lot of people have started transacting digitally. So whether it's Ninja Card, Swiggy, uh, the people are on UPI, so they are Google Pay, Phone Pay, Bharat Pay, those kind of guys, Paytm. Um, but what happens is the integrations, if you wanted to get completely digital loans, are very, very difficult to do because there's also a size mismatch, like a large bank will insist on certain processes. They might be non-standard. There's interpretations, you know, compliance teams say, I want this, I want that. You know, like it's even different fields, different documents. So it's a big mess. Um, so while some people are able to, to manage these integrations, they all, almost most often don't happen. And which is why you've not seen this, uh, you know, credit take root uh, at a very large scale. So it happens in pockets, but it still happens only for the premium segment. It doesn't happen for the bottom of the pyramid. So this is another major problem. And also what you've seen is, you know, when we think loan, we think EMI, we think, Acha, I'll get it for one or two years, I'll play, pay monthly. There's no innovation for 20 years. So we just accept it as it is. And now we have chosen not to accept it, right? So how do you solve for that bottom of the pyramid? As a function of which, who suffers? The little guy suffers, right? They don't get loans, they're given the runaround, they ask for collateral, they ask for documents. And then typically after two weeks, um, they're ignored. And that is even if, like, that they entertained it in the first place. Because if you ask for a 5,000 rupee loan, a bank is going to be like, you know, no, I'm not interested in the first place, right? So it's, it's their moment now. And I'll talk about that. We've seen green, green shoots, but we'll do that uh, towards the end. So we call it like the a landline to mobile leapfrog, right? We never went to CDMA. We went straight to uh, digital. So that's uh, to GSM. So that's what we're talking about. Now, before we get there, right? So we said, let's solve for this and this. Actually, it's a true story, so, Raj, so meet Rajni, right? So Rajni is the protagonist we created, but this is based uh, with a story rooted in reality in 2014 from visits to villages that iSpirit volunteers before me made. I, I haven't done this, but... Um, so who is Rajni, right? She is, and Shara talked about this a little bit. She's a vegetable vendor in a small village in India. She has access to the smart, uh, smartphone and the internet. But she doesn't get credit. So can we get her 500 rupee loan at 9 in the morning, pay it back by 5 in the evening? So she goes buy vegetables or whatever, sells them in some market, and then pays it back and keeps the difference, right? Uh, now the challenge, the challenge with this is, if the minimum ticket size has to be 3 to 5 lakhs, how do we make that 500 rupees possible? So without getting too much into this, and we can share this, this is an open presentation, so it's not like anything secret, but the inner circle is what Rajni does. The middle circle is what the private sector guys do. And the outer circle is what we build in terms of public infra. So you'll see uh, the, you know, the uh, account aggregator, you'll see UPI, you'll see eSign, DigiLock, all those things that Sharad talked about. So here are those Lego blocks, which the private sector builds on. He talked about that Jugalbandi. And then Rajni uses these apps too, to be able to get a loan. 
Now the next chapter of that is OKEN. So account aggregators live. I'll cover both uh, uh, briefly, uh, and so that you get a sense uh, of what this actually enables. Now, just to take a step back, we talked about Lego blocks. So Aadhaar is how I can identify the person. UPI is how I can transfer that money. Now just think about it, right? So again, it was alluded to in the last discussion. If I give a 500 rupee intraday loan, and it costs five rupees to send the money each way, 10 rupees is the cost of just sending the money. What will the lender make for a nine hour loan, right? Uh, nothing. I mean, he, actually they're gonna make a few pesa if it's fully automated. So then this doesn't work because the guy who's taking the risk is not making most of the profit, right? So that's not economically viable. UPI solves for that. We hear a lot from you know uh, the market in general about how UPI is no good. I'm not gonna change, no, no. So it's, it's no good for the people who run it, right? Because it's not uh, profitable because it's zero MDR. But that is not who we were solving for. You know, we are solving for all of India, not just, you know, people like us in the room, right? So this solves the problem of sachet credit to be able to transfer the money. So one of the Lego blocks. The final one is data empowerment, right? So that's account aggregator. Now, I'll just briefly cover how this works. So you're familiar with the UPI, where you consent to your money being transferred from one place, which is your bank account, to another place, which is someone else's bank account, right? What does account aggregator do? is you consent, it's not money flow, it's data flow. So you will consent to your bank statement, so it could be six months, 12 months, whatever you agree to, to transfer it to wherever you want to send them to. So today it's a, you know, we're uh, applying it to a lending use case, but tomorrow who's, you know, who, who, you've applied for a visa, you know the pain you go through that, who said we can't use this for that, right? Or uh, use it for wealth, like you want to send it to a wealth manager to, to get a sense for how they can advise you. The first use case is lending. Now, soon we're gonna have GSTN on there as well. So that invoice data that Sharad talked about. And uh, then there will be other sources of data as well because the idea is to flesh it out, not only have transaction data, but you have your investments because all this makes it easier for a lender to get to know you better to give you money. Or tomorrow it might be an insurance provider, tomorrow it might be a wealth manager, or what have you. So in its simplest form, it is just a way to transfer data with a few clicks. No more bank statements, no more stamping them from at the branch. These are digitally signed straight from the source and they're more verifiable. And I will come back to you with data on why this works by the end of this uh, session. Now what is OCAM, right? So the Open Credit Enablement Network is the protocol that stitches all this together. So it's two things. So look, uh, you know, maybe a lot of you all aren't from like a tech background, but they're APIs. What are APIs? Are pipes that make two software programs talk to each other. Typically they're non-standard, but look at how the internet has formed, right? You have H like HTML protocol that everyone uses and that's why websites are able to talk to each other. This is similar, but this makes where, uh, two, two parties talk where the SM, uh, SME is transacting and the lender. And I'll talk about how that works shortly. The second thing this is, is a platform. So what we want to do, we talked about the challenges in integrating with multiple parties, right? So what if I provided one place where say a lender could come and integrate and have all the parties at the other end. That, that could be uh, Swiggy, Ninja Cart, uh, we're even talking with the India Post Payments Bank, you know, like every, you just integrate once and all these become available. So it reduces the cost of integration, reduces time to market. Now, look, this looks very complex, it really isn't. But there are two major players. So you have the loan service provider apps, and what are those, right? Those are where the MSMEs are transacting, whether it's sellers on Amazon, whether it's uh, uh, restaurants on Swiggy, delivery boys on Swiggy. Um, it could be Ninja Cart, where people are actually doing agri-trades or you know, um, uh, minimum sales price transactions. Uh, it could be, uh, like, you know, just take anyone, clear tax. It could be Pesa Bazaar, uh, Bank Bazaar, those kind of companies. On the other side, you have lenders. And then you have all these public uh, utilities and you know the, the private market that plays. But basically, what are you saying is, can you get finance where you transact? So for example, if I'm, say, a seller, and we've done a reference implementation with the government e-marketplace, where uh, sellers go to actually sell uh, to the government. And now they are small traders, sole props. Some of them have turnover of 12 and 15 lakhs a year. So they're actually less affluent than retail players. So you're transacting there, but you need credit to service these POs. Uh, so you could, today we've built a reference app called Gem Sahai, where you could go there 
and walk away with financing against the purchase order in less than 10 minutes from the start of the journey to um, uh, till money in your account. So, so what this does is we are creating a national marketplace, right, uh, for loans. And you shouldn't have to leave the app or the transaction that you're, uh, that you're participating in to be able to get a loan. So for example, it shouldn't be that I've won a PO, now I have to go to five banks, then I might get a loan. You'll find out in 10 minutes or in five minutes even while you're just transacting, right? Now, before we get further into it, what we've also done, um, you know, we talked about these nonprofits that will manage these ecosystems. So there are two. So Sahamati manages account aggregator, and we've got Credol, uh, which will manage Oken. So this is like the technology layer. So we build the gateway, we build the protocols. As new use cases come up, we create the standards and the process flow for them. Um, so, so without getting too technical, uh, you know, we just these are the guys who like what NPCI does for UPI. We will do one for account aggregator and Credol, and that is me particularly for for Oken. Now, one of the other innovations we made is the problem of scale. Like, you know, if you had to do bilateral integrations, like, so imagine we had 100 LSPs and 200 banks, right? How would they bilaterally agree to participate? You know, like the combinations are almost like N to 200, right? So what we did is we developed an ecosystem agreement where everyone signs one standard agreement and that's it, a simple participation, no complication. Uh, and nobody has to go and there's no like long legal battles with one legal against the other. We've spent time, we've got lenders to participate with us to create the agreement so that the time to sign this is very simple. So then there's no issue with scaling very quickly, right? So this is one of the other innovations. So it's sort of like what MasterCard Visa does, just only in uh, the, the public sector now. The other thing we'll do is we start creating market rules. And one of the most important ones, so one of the other challenges of credit penetration, so those who are familiar, you know, I'll just talk about it really quickly. So when LSPs today, like, uh, you know, Bank Bazaar, India Lens, those guys uh, actually send a lead to a bank, banks actually pay either per lead or on conversion. And what ends up happening is the deeper pocket outbid the other guys. So sometimes it's as high as 4%. And when you do that, it inflates the cost of credit. So, so it's just like, you know, it makes no sense. So what we have now trying to, to propagate that if you're going to use this technology, the LSP should charge the borrower a small service fee and the lead should go free to the lenders. So what happens is it also creates uh, no special relationships and the, you get the chance to surface most options and most choice to the borrower as well. So it shouldn't be that just because someone's paying me, they get the highest co cost of credit and I won't offer any other credit, which did happen in the past or still happens currently, right? And we'll also help with dispute resolution and that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is, and you know, s some of the regulators are already interested in this, we have real-time data. It's very small and I'll talk about the, the numbers where they are. But we are going to have real-time data. Like I have a dashboard and I can see. So as we are talking, probably like 10 loans will go through on the, the dashboard and that's the beauty of this. So we'll provide real-time data as opposed to two-quarter old data, you know, before it's co collated. And as this scales, at the click of a finger, you'll be able to know which bank is doing what, and this is very important for a regulator. So how have we made this real, or how do we make it real, right? So for UPI, uh, we had Bheem, right? And nobody knew what to do with uh, UPI, so we said, okay, we'll just build uh, a reference app. And these apps are not built to compete with the private sector. We are okay if they deprecate after one year. If like The hope is that the private sector builds much better apps, because I mean, that is not our role. Our role is to create the highway and let others, you know, the private sector use it. So we've created two apps. One is called GemSci, which I talked about earlier. And I think in the interest of time, I won't do a demo, but the demo can be embedded here and sent to everyone if you want to have a look. But how are we going to roll this out, right? So GemSci is live, and I'm going to walk you through the numbers in the last five minutes before we take questions. Uh, the second one is GST Sahai. This is also in production. We built it with Sidby. Just three loans have been given. We tested about 20 customers. We've now invited banks to participate. So Gem Sahai is against purchase orders. GST Sahai is against e-invoices that have been uploaded to GST. Same flow, less than 10 minutes, money in the account, right? Um, and then the final, we're building the gateway as we speak. I hope to have the, the gateway ready by September. We'll first implement one private market player which is, uh, you know, put, uh, which will do another invoice financing within the private sector. 
And then we're going to have a multitude of use cases, right? So I have Ninja Cart with aggregated financing, Swiggy and Zomato with Delivery Boy and uh, restaurant financing. Uh, I've had uh, talked to Stellaps, who's talked about milk receipt financing and financing buffaloes for dairy farming, because even the buffaloes are tagged with R R RFID chips. Uh, we're talking to India Post Payments Bank to do bottom of the pyramid microcredit at villages as well, even for people who have feature phones. So look, the, the attitude we take is no matter how weird or difficult the use case is, we will give it a shot. Even if it's low probability, we'll find a way to do it. Because look, we get support from the policymakers as well, because it matters. This is an ignored segment of society. So we attack, you know, like I've got so many requests, can you do re retail? And we say, no, we won't. Unless it's microcredit or MSMEs, we're not going to touch it. And when I say micro, let me talk about uh, what that means. I'll come back to account aggregate in a bit. But this is Gem Sahai. The smallest loan we've done is 160 rupees. The largest is five and a half lakhs. The, the average ticket size is 40,000 rupees. The numbers are small, only 3,000 loans so far, uh, 12 crores in total. But the NPAs have also been, so everyone expected them to be very high, but sub 3%. And that is because one lender went gung ho and, uh, you know, like the, it's like kind of skewed the results. But for the other lenders who've been prudent, it's like less than a percent. So, strangely, is it working? Yes, the numbers are small, but we will see more of this as it scales out. Now, just to talk about the benefits of digital, right? Uh, this, this is Snapmint, who has deployed a counter aggregator for, a, and they had a completely digital flow to begin with. But they deployed a count aggregator, and here are the results, right? They've seen, so the, one of the big benefits is because it's completely digital, and you don't have to upload, and you just a few clicks, and you go through, their throughput on the front end has increased 27%, which is translated into a direct 27% increase in revenues. All those numbers, you know, they're, they're talking about 55% increase in order value, because it's easier to do. Uh, so people are just flowing through more efficiently because it's not a difficult process. It's logical, but it's you know the first time we've seen it. Now, because of that, they've seen the bottom line improvement as well because costs have fallen. They don't need people. They don't need establishment. Uh, so, so they've seen a massive reduction in costs as well. And then finally, the big one is they've seen zero fraud rates. So fraud has a very, very big play, a, a part to play because you might give a loan, but if it goes bad, it's on the whole portfolio, right? if it's gone from 0.5% to zero, right? So, and, that's, and this has also been reported by Lending Card, which I'll show you next, which has shown similar results. And they have compared manual to uh, digital. And the final thing is, even for a digital flow, what was 440 rupees has become 100 in terms of cost of processing. See, this is, what did I talk about earlier? Three to 5,000 rupees acquisition. You're talking about 440 being digital, and then with account aggregator down to 100 rupees. So if we keep pushing this envelope, and now when we um, uh, introduce Oken, even the marketing cost of acquisition becomes zero. So you bring down the cost so low that those loans become viable. And this is the first indication, the green shoots, that this works, right? So you know, up to two years ago, all we were saying was strategy and hypothesis, and yes, it should work. Now we have proof. Now the other side is uh, you know, uh, lending card. And they've seen similar results, right? Zero fraud, uh, more throughput, higher ticket sizes, uh, lower cost of operation. And it, you know, they've said the way they put it was like if we had done this increased business, we had to hire people. And now we haven't had to hire those people because it's all digital, machine does it. And what is technology? It's a sunk cost. So, uh, and then you, uh, you, know, you deprecate it over time and it's a very small amount. So it obviously uh, rationalizes over time. And then finally, uh, you know, there, there are also user experience benefits, and then uh, there you see that the, the fraud rates are zero again because you can't tamper with the bank statement, right? And what has happened because you can't tamper with the bank statement? Even KYC has become better because as long as the name on this matches on account aggregator matches with eKYC, you're good to go, right? There's no discrepancy, and and it's uh, proved to be really, really efficient. So look. We are now at the cusp, right? So I've been at this now for two years. We launched Sahai last year. Um, you know, it took a month to give the first loan of 360 rupees, but now it's beginning to pick up pace, but now even the lenders are uh, approaching. And uh, we're really excited about the use cases that we'll see coming forth. And as 
you know, with SBI included now, uh, and this happened just this week, like maybe two days ago, uh, it's a big missing piece because they have a lot of the current accounts. So, you know, the other thing is those who, uh, who you are familiar with, you know, lending, you've always heard from the credit bureaus that if you don't have a credit score, uh, you're, uh, you're no good, right? But that actually doesn't hold true. The data was there, it was just not unlocked. Because, you know, you'd hear a lot of people frustrated that I ne ne never taken a loan, but I get loans at, you know, like rates of people who've defaulted, right? Because it's your first time, they're not sure, they don't want to take the risk. Now what we're going to do with account aggregator and with GST, right? So what does GST do? GST is a proxy to your turnover. Account aggregator, bank statements will show you whether those, that turnover turned into cash. And your repayment history tells you whether you've taken loans or what your leverage level is if you're defaulted. So even if you didn't have that uh, and you're just GST and, um, you know, your bank statements, you can now create a quote-unquote credit score which will give you rates as a first-time borrower which are equal to someone who is a premium borrower with track. So that is going to be a big change going forward, and this doesn't e exist in the West either, right? So, and I'll close, you know, I know Sharad alluded to this as well, but we tend to always say like, okay, what has been successful in the West, now we'll do it in India and replicate it. My learning, and I spent many, many years at the Credit Bureau, is that our problems are unique, and we'd always say India is different. This is the first time we've had the opportunity to solve India's problems our way. And we are beginning to see it's working, and we're very excited about it. So I think I'll stop there and take any questions if you guys have them. Yes, they'll charge interest, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, I, I missed that. So here's the beauty, right? MSMEs, you're all used to hearing them get interest rates from 24 to 36% unofficial. The range of interest rates here is 10.95% to 17%. We're already seeing the change. When we get the public sector banks in, we hope it'll be even lower. We don't. We are non-profit. So, when, uh, so, uh, so that, that is the design. So one of the other things, right? Uh, look, when you're institutionalizing this, like we, we don't live on love and fresh air, right? And we'll need people as it gets scaled out. So there's also a paradigm shift. Um, look, we always thought of the private sector, you always thought of the public sector. But I think this sits, both Sahamati, Credol will sit somewhere in the middle. And the idea is, can you create that paradigm shift? Like, okay, see, this is one of our personal peeves also, that the brightest minds go and decide how to serve ads to the, so that people can sell the most ridiculous product. Or, uh, you know, or like, how can I engage people so they watch short videos the most? Nobody makes the choice to do this sort of stuff. So it's also potentially part to do with market comp, right? So maybe that's a paradigm shift we need to drive. Hopefully we might be the first ones to do that because we don't want to make profit. So you don't want to be like a MasterCard visa, but you want to attract talent to be able to keep going and to create a better than a world-class uh, system. So the question I had, I've had a couple of engagements with Nandan and Sharad on this. You're going to use individual tax and GSC and data for getting them loans. Supreme Court has come down heavily on anything called informed consent. Right. You're showing consent. Right. Even if you prove that consent is informed consent, how are you going to use individual data, which is privacy, which obviously has privacy implication, to enable them to get loans? Right. So look, right now, when we, you're right. So it's a problem we've anticipated and we are working on a solution, right? So, which is almost there, we're going to put it, so I'll explain it. It's a very good question. So look, Today we have only six banks participating, or six lenders, so like four NBFCs, two banks. Tomorrow it might be 100, and if you consent and your data goes to 100 banks, you may not want to, because we are cognizant there might be three bad actors in there, those shell NBFCs who are just collecting data and God knows doing what with it. So we are developing something called a confidential clean room, which has not been developed anywhere in the world yet. Uh, we have some of the best minds, right? Like, uh, you know, some of the guys, who I won't name them, but working in MNCs and tech and all are helping to build this. What does it do? It's a black box. When this data, say, goes out to 50 lenders, it will go to that black box which the lender doesn't see. The lender can send their credit model to the black box and send back an offer. So you are able to come with the same outcome without seeing the data. And then when, uh, if the person becomes your customer, you're okay to see the data. But till they become your customer, you won't see it. So we are maybe three, four months away from the first reference implementation of How that. How they make an offer without seeing the data? So. It's called confidential computing, differential privacy. So 
the data goes into a black box, and what we'll have to do is run it parallelly in the beginning to see we're getting the same outcome. Because see, uh, there's two cycles, and I can discuss this more in detail also. There's an inference cycle where you take the decision and give an offer, but there's a training cycle. So one of the other things I didn't talk about because of the time was the creditors data sandbox. So we're in discussion with the uh, Reserve Bank Innovation Hub to do this is, what is the other problem? So what Bajaj did for retail credit back in 2006 was use credit bureau data to discover a credit model to be able to do consumer durable lending. Now we want to short circuit the process with discovery of MSME credit policy. But how can you do that if everyone makes their own mistakes? It'll take like a decade, a decade and a half for that to happen. But if we can create aggregated data, link the data, and then anonymize it, can we provide a place, which is a, also a confidential clean room, where people can go and train their models to find out what the credit policy should be from aggregate data as opposed to only the data you make. So I don't learn only from my mistakes. I learn from everyone's mistakes to refine the model. So you know, I know this is so, sort of sounds arcane, but we have recognized the problem. And we don't want to be the source of, you know, institutionalizing data sharing, but then like, uh, you know, sort of risking privacy. So, uh, you know, and actually like we keep talking about it internally as well, is that we seem to be the only ones worried about privacy, but like, like what, you know, like people who on the street don't, I mean, kisi ko bhi, like, people you know, on the street won't. No, no, but we are the guardians, right? So, so we get it. Like we don't want data in other people's hands unless it's purpose controlled and only if it's their customer. If it is? Their customer. Only once they become their customer, just because you get an offer, doesn't mean that now that person can sell you insurance and wealth. You just applied for a loan, now you get a phone call, aapko ye bhi chahiye, aapko ye bhi chahiye. that shouldn't be the outcome at all. Sorry, someone had a question. So if the black box that you're talking about, if it's standard, I mean, it'll also standardize, if you're thinking that anonymized data can be used and you're training, everybody trains the model and Will that reduce differentiation between different lenders? Because you know, ultimately, everybody has a different model, different no, risk appetite. That's how. Yeah, that's money. right, and that is the difference. Because your cost of capital is different, the cohort you want to lend to different is different. Look, I don't know the bankers in this room, and no disrespect to them. Everyone thinks they have the secret sauce. If you actually, we could sit down now in ten minutes and list down the credit policy points. The only thing that matters is the, the thresholds of those. Uh, the rules are always more or less the same, and it comes down to that. So it comes down to what is your cost of capital, hence what can you lend at, and who you want to lend to, and what you're comfortable uh, lending to. Like, why didn't people go and do what Bajaj did in 2006? They only started 10 years later once they saw the success, right? So people always have different risk appetites, and that means they will always end up being different models. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm around if you want to have a chat uh, more in detail. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rishi. This was remarkable. Thank you. Mm -hmm.